new method of counter-terrorism, fighting hostile ideas. Artis Polly Boyka finds out how it'll be carried out and what it means in particular for British Muslims. UK Prime Minister David Cameron says it's high time the government focused on tackling non-violent extremism. But what is it? You don't have to support violence to subscribe to certain intolerant ideas which create a climate in which extremists can flourish. Ideas which are hostile to basic liberal values such as democracy, freedom, sexual equality. By shining a spotlight on those who could be saying or even thinking the wrong things, the government's taking counter-terrorism to the next level. And this is the main tool in their arsenal. The promotion of British values. Our British values will win the day. British values, I would say freedom, tolerance, respect for the rule of law. One of the main ideas behind the UK government's campaign against Islamic fundamentalism is the promotion of so-called British values. So the idea that if you live in the UK, you subscribe to a certain set of beliefs like in democracy, tolerance, the rule of law and respect for British institutions. But all this presents somewhat of a pickle for the country's leadership because telling its citizens what they should believe in kind of goes against the idea of freedom and tolerance that the government is seeking to promote. These Muslim teenagers have gathered in London for an event organised by their local youth group. I wanted to ask them how they feel about the government's emphasis on British values. When you talk of British values, where are the British values around selling arms to dictatorships? The, the things that they say are British values are universal values. We can still have our culture and, and respect the culture of the English, you know what I mean? We can all work together. The government wants people to work together too, but perhaps not quite in the same way. The recently adopted Counter-Terrorism Act has made local authorities, schools, hospitals and prisons responsible for identifying and reporting individuals they think might be vulnerable to radicalisation. Britain's most senior Muslim police officer recently said that the government needs to be, quote, less precious about entering Muslims' private sphere because that's where he says extremism first germinates. And he listed potential signs of radicalisation to watch out for, such as if young people stop drinking or socialising with their friends, and even if they start avoiding shopping at M&S, which is mistakenly perceived to be a Jewish company. But the drive to stamp out extremist ideology is doing little to quell Islamophobia in Britain. Attacks against Muslims have increased by 66% over the past two years, and many more incidents go unreported. We ask Muslims exactly that. What do you think actually uh, causes all this? And they identify politicians, they identify the media, they identify the creation of culture of hate. And yet, among the teenagers I meet here, there's a cautiousness about speaking out. There's nothing to, you know, there's nothing that I would change, you know, so yeah. Polly Boyko, RT, London. Up next on the network, plantation slavery. It was done away with more than a century ago, but apparently one outpost remains, this time in Liberia. Up next, a disturbing story from one Japanese cinematographer.